Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you guys are new, <laughs> our channel. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to A Glimpse of Clarity. Uh, my name is Steven, this is my wife Madeline. Today we're gonna be talking about depression and anxiety. Or did you wanna say that part? I should probably say okay, that. Okay, okay. Do you just want me to do the intro? Yeah, sure. Okay. Welcome back everybody to A Glimpse of Clarity. <laughs> Madeline. Welcome Dude. back to a glimpse of clarity. Okay. Just say welcome back to our podcast or something like that. Or you no, well, just do whatever. Okay. Do whatever. Can they hear you rubbing my back like that? No. Okay. Welcome back to a glimpse of clarity. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about depression and anxiety. So I just wanted to say this up front quickly. If that is something that you cannot handle right now, maybe click out of the podcast and we hope to see you guys in our next one. But today we're just going to be talking about our experiences with it and... Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, that. that's pretty much it. We hope that you guys can kind of take something from this episode. Uh, so if you're struggling, I, I if you're struggling with it, I recommend you guys listen this out and uh, hopefully it'll help you in the future. But uh, I, if you guys didn't know, I'm the one that has anxiety and Madeline has depression. So we kind of like cancel each other out uh, together. So yep. <laughs> I think we're the perfect fit. <laughs> <laughs> very true um, we haven't done a podcast in like two or three weeks so yeah. we got to get back into the groove of it so if you hear some pauses we're sorry about that we're a little rusty yeah. again <laughs> but we hope you guys are enjoying the podcast this is our first one that we filmed since releasing it mm -hmm. oh we also had a channel member or somebody oh, yeah we need somebody to say thank you i is believe it was a supporter of it, our channel i think it was brianna willis let me make sure though yeah, is that Brianna or Brianna? Brianna has Bri it, Brianna Bri Brianna. No, I think it's Brianna. Brianna. Two ends? Maybe. Sorry, that name always confuses me. But sorry if we're pronouncing that wrong. But thank you so much, uh, Brianna Willis, for supporting our podcast. How do they do that? So it's through Anchor. I'm pretty sure. If you go to our Anchor website, linked on our YouTube video down below, uh, I think you can go on there and support us through there. If you guys want to, you you obviously don't have to, but it would help us out and getting more podcast equipment or whatever, equipment. just supporting us through this podcast. We are hearing you guys about the microphone situation. This isn't we okay. This is a pretty expensive microphone. We can't just go drop the money on yeah. that. Well, yeah. So this one's four hundred dollars. This is a hundred dollars. So it. Once we start making money from the podcast, we'll put we'll put money towards the new microphone. We've already put a lot of money towards it. So the microphone, yes, it's very important. And this one's pretty good. It just doesn't sound good compared to Steven's. Um, and then also his voice is just more aesthetically pleasing to Smooth. listen to. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. I don't know. I, like, I don't know how to explain it. I think this is more of a bassier microphone. I know you guys probably don't care about this at all, but. But we just wanted to let you guys know that we are hearing you guys, and I'm going to try to talk closer to the microphone. Steven thinks that's partly why, too, as I lean back and talk like that. So I need to practice being up close to it. Anyway, with all of that being said, this is our first podcast that we're filming. In and a I long just, time. I just want to say thank you to everyone for the support on it. You we're guys, so like, grateful. I, we have had more support than I expected through the podcast. So mm -hmm. thank you guys so much. You guys are incredible. Um, like we can't thank you guys enough because you guys are the reason why we're doing this. And we love every single one of you guys. And we're just super grateful for everything. Yes. All right. With that being said, I guess we'll go ahead and get into our stories. Mm -hmm. I think you should go first because I'm not the greatest speaker in the world. Um, I have some <laughs> things written down. I still need to kind of think about what I need to say. Uh, so you can go whenever you're ready. Okay. And we also have a cat. Mia. Hey, girl. Mia. Aw, hi. Hey, you're so great. Come on. You can come sleep up there. This is the magic blankie right here. I don't even know where this blanket's from. Don't either. I got it when I went off to college. It's a nice blanket. Come on, Mia. Hey, this is a good spot for you. Right here. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and get started while Steven tries to summon our cat. Um, oh. Yep, she's not moving. Never mind. She got she, comfortable. Did you show her? Can you see her? <laughs> You're beautiful. You can stay there. You're a good girl. That's a good spot. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to be going back to about my junior year in high school. So before I met Steven, 
any oh. Stephen was not involved. <laughs> also, you have a YouTube video on this too. On yes. your main channel. I do have a YouTube video about my depression story, and I have not told this story in a very long time, so please bear with me. Um, I might have a little like, oh, wait, no, it actually went like this um, moments. So anyway, we're going back to our or my junior year in high school, and I just remembered being sad all the time about nothing. I was just sad, and I would cry myself to sleep yada, yada, yada. But then I would have my moments of where I was good and doing okay. And then it would be like months at a time. And that'll come back in the story in a little bit. Seasonal depression? Is that like a real thing? Yeah, I was going to say that later. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Okay. Here, I'll bleep it out. Seasonal (laughs) depression. No, it's okay. Um, So then fast forward to my senior year of high school. And uh, at this time, I had a different boyfriend, and I was on a tour, like touring the world, well, not the world, the country of the United States, um, to see my... I'm just going to fix this. Away. Hey, Michael. Now we have another kitty. We have another cat up here. No, don't play with that. Sorry, I was just getting the microphone out of Madeline's face so you guys could see her. You got a haircut today. It looks really good. I did get a haircut. Um, Michael just jumped down. But so I am now in my senior year of high school and I am doing a tour and meeting a bunch of supporters. It was awesome. I am so grateful for that experience. But there was a negative thing that came with that. And that was my depression. So I got to like kind of map out first what my tour was like. So Keep in mind, this is during my senior year, and I am in public school. Like, yeah, like it 17, wasn't, 18 years old. Yeah, and it's not like I was homeschooled and I could just leave or whatever. So every Friday, I would leave school. Like I would stay all day. Sometimes I would have to be called out early and miss like a couple of my classes, but I would go to school all day long, and then I would go to the airport, which was a two-hour ride mainly like an hour and 30, but it's still a long ways. Yeah. And then I would get on a plane, obviously. Luckily I had my twin brother drew with me. So I at least had somebody, but we would get on this plane. We would go to this tour and what it was, was on Saturday. It was an all day event. And then we would come home on Sunday. Like it was a quick, like, here you go. We're do there. Yeah. Do you even like, did you even have homework or anything like senior year over, over the weekend? Yes, I would have projects and stuff I needed to do. Also, that was two or three weekends out of a month, by the way. So I was home some of the weekends, but some of them I wasn't. So again, it was just a lot of traveling for a 17, 18 year old. Oh, yeah. Um, 100%. Again, luckily, I had my brother with me. And but I I couldn't even imagine doing that at all. Yeah. And his was a little bit easier because he only went to school till about 1231 because he had a different job at that time so he got out of school early um i went till 415 and um so it was just a lot going on and i think that kind of played a part in it too because i'm such a homebody i love being at home i love being with my family and i just i didn't like going away from home i that was i was not used to it but i am so thankful that i did it and now i got like a really cool experience and you got i mean you got to travel the united states like at such a young age it was such a fun time and i do again i am so grateful for it and also i had a boyfriend there so it was like our way of making our long distance relationship work, work yeah because and we didn't have to pay for the flights like that's, the flights were paid for we yeah. just got to see each other two weekends out of the month which and that's act like who else experiences that ever no Nobody. in a long distance so he lived in california and i live in texas mm-hmm. so um Yeah, it was an awesome thing for our relationship, too. But um, I would always be sad. And this person, I don't even know what name to give him. John. John. Okay, so John, um, not that it matters. Like, I'm sure he wouldn't care if we said his name. And a lot of we're on all good terms, too. It's not like. And a lot of you guys probably know who I'm talking about, especially if you were here around that era. Uh, But so John. Uh, went to the tour too, and I got to see him every weekend. Well, 
when we would like be FaceTiming and stuff or at night, I would always be crying. Like I would cry all the time and have really nothing that I was crying about. And he was like, you need help. (laughs) You need to figure this out. Good for him. Like telling you though, like actually. And he was being nice about it. He wasn't like, oh my God, you need help. (laughs) But he was just telling, I was like, no, I don't. No, I don't. I don't need help. I don't think he really knew what it was either at the time. Uh, but anyway, just always crying. It put a strain on our relationship. And I think that's partly why he did break up with me. Mm-hmm. He did break up with me in like the worst way possible. <laughs> um, thankfully, he did because I would have not met Steven. I wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. And no John. telling where the heck I would be. So glad he did it now. But at the time I was 18. I don't know. I guess I was 18 and thought I loved this guy. thought I was going to get married to him and whatever. So what he did, I'm just going to fill them in really quick, was it was the day after Christmas. I had just flown. I wasn't there. I wasn't at his house on Christmas, but I think I flew home like the 23rd. Had just celebrated Christmas with him and his family and whatever. And the day after Christmas, oh, he had just given me a locket, by the way, that said, I love you or forever. Yeah, something along the lines of that. And it was like so cute or whatever. Yeah, no, he broke up with me the day after Christmas over the phone, which obviously, again, it was long distance. I I, I mean, I could kind of understand where like breaking up over the phone right there because no, it's long distance. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. But also, like, imagine doing it on that tour. Like him breaking up with you at the tour, you would never want to go back, right? That's we'll get into that, man. Because oh. at this point, we're still on the tour. Oh. <laughs> so oh oh oh. <laughs> so I just think it was funny because why didn't he like tell me beforehand so I could mm-hmm. cancel my flights and not go there? Like what? But buy presents for the entire family. Yeah, exactly. And for him, like I think I spent like seven hundred dollars on that, like the total thing. And I was oh. eighteen. Like that was my money. I thought you were saying just on him. I was like seven hundred dollars. No, on like on the total. Okay. Like with flights and presents and whatever. Um. But that is besides the point. I just thought it was funny and needed to add that because that does come in in a little bit. So I'm still on this tour at this point. And like I said earlier, John was on this tour, too. And um, I did not want to go anymore. I was just super sad about the breakup and whatnot. Well, then I met Steven and he well, I guess. No, I haven't met you yet. I have not met you yet. So I'm at this tour. I think it's like the beginning of January. Like, I think I had just gotten on my medicine when I met you. Oh, really? Yeah. And so and around the holidays. OK, I've pinpointed it. This is where the seasonal depression, seasonal depression. Thing came This in. is where I should have butted in. <laughs> Bud in so seasonal depression. I think that is what I definitely had because the last like three years up until this point in my senior year, I had always gotten so sad around the holidays. And that's supposed to be the time that you're so excited because family comes You're home with family and, and you're hanging out with everyone. It's supposed to be a good time. Yeah. And just for some reason, I would get so sad and I didn't know why I would get so sad. And it was just it was just awful. And I would get mad at myself for being sad because I I did and do have a really good life. And I it would just make me even more angry at myself, more sad at myself because I'm like, why are you sad? There are people out there that are struggling with things that are way worse than the things I'm struggling with. And at the time, I didn't even know what I was struggling with. Mm -hmm. Like, I had no reason to be as sad as I was. And it was a constant sad. Um, I guess I should go into like my symptoms or what I kind of realized. Um, So I would, mom, if you were listening to this, again, I know you've already heard this story, but it's kind of a hard one to hear. Um, but if you want to click out, you can, (laughs) although you already know, but I would think about death 24 seven, like all the time I wanted to die. Um, I did not want to 
off myself. I don't want YouTube to yeah. <laughs> take it down. I'm just going to say it. I did not want to commit suicide, but I did want to die. I would constantly. You didn't want to be the cause of your own death. Yeah, yeah. I wanted something else to happen to me. And I just remember being in the car all the time, constantly saying like, I want to die. Like, please crash into me. Like, I want that car to hit me or I want my car to malfunction. So I flip off the side of the road. Like, that's literally every time I drove. That's what I was thinking. But I would never do anything. I didn't obviously want to cause harm to somebody else. I was just hoping I was in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. In my eyes, which in other people, you're in the wrong place, place at, the, at wrong the wrong time. time. Yeah. But that's how I was feeling. Like, I would imagine life without me being here. I would think it would be so much easier and I wouldn't have to deal with the things I was dealing with. And it was just really bad. And I was keeping that all to myself and in my journal. I had a journal at the time that I would write in and um, it was just really bad. Um, I actually remember, no one knows this actually. <laughs> I found them probably like a year ago, but I wrote letters because I was so convinced that I was going to die young because I wanted to so bad mm -hmm. that I wrote letters to my sister, to my brothers, to my parents, what? to my grandparents. I wrote these letters so if I did die they would find them. I didn't even know this. I know. I didn't tell anyone because I'm freaking psycho. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I was so convinced that something was going to happen to me because I wanted it to so bad. And I now I read the letters and they're so cringy. I was like, dude, this was definitely like... Peak. <laughs> that was in your peak. Yeah, that's so cringy. Um, anyway, I... Um, yeah. I've lost my train of thought, thought because I really have not told anybody. Yeah, that shocked me. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to die, like point blank. That's what it was. And I wanted to so badly. Well, after John had broken up with me, I was going still to this tour. And I forget where I was. I was somewhere across the states and i am not very good with like telling people my feelings like i hate feeling vulnerable and vulnerable in front of people like in person yeah. Yeah. i'm more of like a texting girl like when i started my um period i texted my mom like hey mm -hmm. i think i started <laughs> like i didn't go tell her saying it out loud is just weird yes. to other people yeah i don't like i can understand that yeah. yeah i hope like in the future like with our kids like i can make sure our kid is comfortable which nothing my mom did nothing my mom did that's just how i am as a person um but i would just like hope that they are comfortable yeah. i don't know but some people just aren't and i am one of those people um i've recently obviously gotten more open about that kind of stuff but as a teenager i was not open about it um so i just remember being really sad and texting my mom saying because i was at this tour and i couldn't hang out with john because mm -hmm. we were not dating anymore and it just li literally crushed me and so i texted my mom and said i need help which is probably like not the best choice yeah. of words. <laughs> best choice of words. Especially to use when ever. she can't like come get me or uh -huh. whatever. But I basically just explained to her, like, dude, I've been sad for years because she was thinking it was more of like a breakup thing. Like, yeah. oh, she's just sad about the breakup. But it was when I was with him, whenever I wasn't with him, like I was still so sad all the time. And I basically just told her, like, I think I need to go to a doctor because I had I didn't know what depression was. I no one talked about it like it is now. No, not at all. Like no one. I mean, you would hear about it, but it was not to the extent of now. Like I thought the definition of depression was just like, oh, you're sad <laughs> yeah. for a little bit. Like I didn't think it was like this whole. Yeah. I, and yeah. And that's just like, yeah, no one really talked about it. So I didn't even know the symptoms to look out for. Well, um, it. Whatever. And I was really good at hiding my feelings. I no one knew um, what I was feeling like, because whenever I was on broadcast, because I was broadcasting a lot at this time, 
I would be happy and excited and cool or whatever because no one wants to watch a girl crying on broadcast. So I would keep all of that stuff to my feel or to me. And I just wouldn't tell anybody else except for John. He knew. Yeah. uh, Because he was my boyfriend at the time. And he was like, dude, you need to figure something out. But he I don't think he ever really tossed around the idea of depression. Uh, But anyway, I basically just went to the doctor and she explained to me. Like I told her, I'm surprised I wasn't admitted or anything because <laughs> I told her basically I wanted to die. And uh, she was like, you're not wanting to like harm other people. And I was like, no, because I think she was going to take my car keys away. Yeah. Um, which, again, I was not going to harm anyone else. I just wanted me to be yeah. harmed. Um, so anyway, she put me on this medicine. It's called Sertraline. It's like the generic brand of Zoloft. I'm sure mm-hmm. you guys have heard of that. Um, what did they start you out on? 50 milligrams okay. and i think most people start off with 25 that's what i thought too for some reason maybe they were like okay she's a whack <laughs> she really needs the 50 she, she needs a little extra help <laughs> yeah so they like, prescribed me 50 milligrams of sertraline and i just remember like just even me telling my mom that i needed help I just felt like this weight lifted off my shoulders. Like someone else finally knew about it. Although I was kind of embarrassed, um, at least she finally knew. Mm -hmm. And I am just so blessed and thankful that my mom believed me and she made the doctor's appointment. She didn't just say, oh, no, you're just sad from the breakup, which at first she asked me, are you sure? Like it's something I don't know. Um, so yeah, I'm just so thankful because I know some kids don't have that and their parents just shove it under the rug and that's just not the best thing to do. Um, and I would, I'm just so thankful that they listened to me and my parents and, um, because it is a real thing. Yeah. It's really real. Yeah. And so I got on my medication and um it they they say to wait like a month or two before you start seeing effects and I just really think just somebody else knowing about it helped me so much. Um and eventually I was up to, no, I think I recently went up to yeah, 100. Yeah, yeah. I was on 50 for a very long time. Well, after about a year I Like whenever we were together, you got up to 50 yeah yeah. or 100 100. yeah so i um decided to get off of medicine i think i'd been on it for a year at this point and also steven is in the picture by now yeah this was in january of 2017 when i first got on my depression medicine and i met steven in january the ending of january um so i was already on my medication and i was trying to talk about it openly because I just felt like it, like other people were probably going through that same exact thing and not realizing that it's depression. Um, but anyway, my doctor just explained to me that I just had a chemical imbalance and my brain was not, I don't know if they, if it produces serotonin I think or it does. if my brain needed serotonin. I, I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor, but it had something to do with the levels of serotonin. They were off and the medicine was supposed to help either promote it. I think it's kind of like how like melatonin gummies work in a sense. Like it gives you that extra melatonin because your brain produces it. So it produces but serotonin too. You would think they would give you serotonin. Like I think it helps produce it. If you guys know more. Let us know. Probably should have done research on it. <laughs> I just know something was off in my brain and I needed medication. Yeah. Also, again, medication is not for everyone. I know a yeah. lot of people are very hesitant about it, but... In it, my case, it changed my life. It's definitely worth a shot if you haven't ever tried it. I mean, that could be something yeah. to look into. But then there is the flip side where some people think like when they're t- having to take the medicine that um, they're like, oh, no, I don't want to have to be dependent on this for the rest of my life or whatnot. So then some people start actually getting more sad. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you do... consult a doctor honestly just consult a doctor and they'll get you to the right path whether you need to exercise more or Mm -hmm. find out a hobby i don't know to help distract yourself um there are other ways of coping with depression yeah my doctor told me that our the medicine that we take surgery i take the same medicine for Mm -hmm. but for anxiety it helps both um 
he's told me that it's not like a lifelong thing. This sertraline is not addictive. Um, and he says some people usually stick on it for about like three to five years and then are slowly wean themselves off. Mm -hmm. And then, so it's, I don't know. And also medicine is also kind of trial and error. Some people might not. There's different yeah. versions of medicine. So if we, one's not working yeah. for you, they can try we, something We know else. some people that were on sertraline and then changed to something else. And that other medicine helped them mm -hmm. way more uh, than, than what sertraline did. Yeah. Nice. Good, Good job. <laughs> I contributed. Yay. Uh, sorry, I'm talking a lot. I've, I want you to talk I about I forgot it. where I was. Uh, Sertraline. So I'm finally on medication. Yeah. Um, the doctor helped me. Cool. Great. Oh, yeah. A year later. So a year later, I decided, oh, I'm happy again. I don't need medicine. I have Steven. Cool. I'm awesome. Well, then seasonal depression hit me <laughs> so the holidays came around i would say like november or well october november i went right back into that like bad not good not doing great and i ultimately got back on my medicine um and i have been on it ever since um it is now 2022 so i've been taking it for four years that's i don't four. know I guess it's four. I mean, I had a year break in between, like a couple months. Mm -hmm. A couple months to a year break. Um, but yeah, I'm still on it and I still live by it. I am overall a happier person. I have my moments of being sad. Yeah, um, like that naturally. medicine's not going to fix you completely. It's yeah. not going to make you not ever sad again. I mean, being sad is a natural Yeah reaction that humans have and um i guess that's okay i know why i upped my medicine it was when my brother sam passed away um obviously i was not doing great <laughs> and yeah. um so we just kind of upped it to see if it would help and i mean i would say it helped a bit i think i just needed to grieve mm -hmm. anyway and needed to cry yeah. anyway um, I know some people are probably going to ask what the side effects of sertraline are, mm. um, or kind of like what it, how it makes you feel after you've been on it for a while. So I know, um, about like after a month after you, uh, start taking it, you don't really feel different. You just, you're like, Whoa, I'm not like, sad I'm not anymore. sad today. Or like, I didn't have a panic attack today or, or something. It's been a week since I've cried. Yeah. And it, it kind of just like hits you out of the out of the blue like a week or two after the month period and you're like oh like this is i think i guess it's working mm -hmm. or something like it's that. not like a, a high that you get it's yeah. just yeah it helps produce serotonin i guess yeah and other like dopamines and stuff like that it's something to do with the neurotrans um if it looks a little different i got something to kind of like make it to where we can record for longer than 30 minutes. If you guys don't know, like a regular camera can only record for 30 minutes. Um, I actually pushed the wrong button, so it stopped at the 30 minute mark. So that's why there was a cut right there. But hopefully it looks a little bit better and there's it's just like higher quality or something like that. So if it looks different, that's why. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, I was putting Mia earlier. She's super soft. I know. She just had her arm, I think, down. I really do think Mia's like you're emotional support animal oh yeah if i didn't have her at college my depression probably would have been 40 times worse like having something there or just like having an animal or at least for us it helps so much like i love hanging out with our cats I like do they kind of they just get us you know they're our form of serotonin yeah <laughs> they're awesome even they're though Mia kind of looks a little wonky sometimes yeah, she needs right. to close her eyes all the way. <laughs> um, so I, is it my turn? You were talking about the symptoms of... Oh, I mean, I, I don't think, like, do we even exper like experience any symptoms? Like, So my main side effect that I had with um, my medicine was I had really bad headaches for mm. the first, like, month or two. Um, maybe longer. I can't remember. But now that has subsided. And I guess that is like a, a common side effect that people have. There's other side effects too. Kind of like we were talking about some people's depression gets worse. Yeah. Or anxiety gets worse. So always make sure you are talking to your doctor and giving updates. I remember um, whenever I started on it, he said, hey, if anything gets worse, call me. Just keep me updated on how you feel and everything. And eventually, like, we'll get you on the right on the right medication. Mm -hmm. But 
I never had to do that because it was I just I got lucky and it worked well for me. Same. Yeah, that was the first medicine I tried and it Mm -hmm. it works. And now if we don't take it for like two Two or three days, two or three days, four days is like, whoa, you have to like wean yourself off of it. That is one downside to it. You can't just stop. You can't cut it cold turkey like you have to wean yourself off. And by weaning yourself off, I mean, it's like a month or two process. Yeah, It's it's kind of hard because I mean, we both stopped taking the medicine at one one point point. and uh, i remember i didn't take it for like four days one time and it's just you just feel dizzy you feel feel, drunk yeah it's like you can't move like you're always like moving back and forth and everything it just like vertigo feelings it sucks and you're just like i can't do it like you get headaches and it's hard so definitely if you're trying to at least get off of it wean yourself off i've been do it the right way (laughs) um i don't have a provider for my medicine right now so i need to go find a doctor soon so but so what i've been doing to keep my medicine going longer is i take it every other day and i don't know if doctors recommend that i doubt it probably not <laughs> it, but it, it does help me like it it i don't think i need to take it as often as mm-hmm. i used to because i i was way worse two years ago than i am now so yeah i think you also know your body like for some people they probably can't even imagine just missing one day i was like that at one point i was like i need it i need like as soon as i woke up i need to take my medicine Mm -hmm. i need it and what was i gonna say so you're saying wean yourself off um can't stop cold turkey or anything like that oh by like day two if i forget to take my medicine once i start getting a headache i'm like shoot i haven't taken my medicine i'm like okay i gotta go take it yeah you also have to take it with a meal so like you know, like take it around the same kind, like the same time. Oh, that's each day. another thing that was hard for me was having to take it around the same time. So I'd have to set an alarm on my. I don't know if I had a watch at that time, uh, but I think I set it on my phone, and then I got an Apple Watch specifically for that. So my alarm would go off on my wrist, and I could be like, "Oh shoot, I got to take my medicine," yeah. rather than my phone going. Rah, rah, rah. Okay, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay, so Steven's going to get into his part of the story and his yeah. experience. So this kind of goes like way back. So I kind of like now that I think about it and I understand that this is like actually real, like people actually struggle with it. It kind of like I had like moments where I'm like, oh, so like that explains why I was nervous at this. So uh, growing up, like no matter what it was, every single holiday or anything event, I always get like super nervous. I can't sleep the night before. I feel like there's something on my chest. And like, if you guys ever see me do like, I'm trying to think of what I used to do. I still do it sometimes. Like, oh, whenever I'm nervous for the hair video, like I push together like super hard. Like I I shake, I shake a lot whenever I'm nervous. Um, And like that happened to me all the time when I was younger. And so it kind of does make sense, but I never believed in mental health at all until I met Madeline. I I thought it was a hoax. I was like, dude, nobody like people with depression, just like be happy. I was one of those people Mm -hmm. and I know I'm wrong now. So I think I've grown from that. Um, so I, I've always kind of struggled with it and I don't, I don't, I don't know if is anxiety and depression hereditary. I think it actually some people say it is because I know my grandpa was on some medicine, I think, for anxiety. So Mm -hmm. I don't don't know if that plays a part in it or anything or I think people do say that it is hereditary and can be passed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm almost positive. Again, we are not doctors, so maybe do your own research. Yeah. I'm kind of just talking like saying whatever comes to my mind. So. Yeah. Don't take everything I say <laughs> like, I, I, like I'm a doctor. Um, I have some notes written down because my brain is kind of all over the place at some times. So if you see me looking down, I'm reading some notes. Um, so I kind of had to grow up super fast on the Internet. I was 17. Mm-hmm. I like whenever Madeline came into the picture and I was uh, I, I didn't know social media was like this huge thing. Like I knew that you could make money off of there, but. I never thought that I would like be in this situation and I just had to grow up so fast because being in the pub- public eye is really hard because you kind of feel like there's all these people looking at you and judging you all the time. And uh, I've mi- forgot to say that I was yeah. going to mention how being a social media influencer is 
like you're in a second high school. Um, so when you go to high school, there's obviously the cliques and the judgmental people and you just want to not impress people, but you want to be liked as much as we say we don't want to be liked or we yeah. don't care um, what people think it we gets do. to you. Yeah. yeah. Everybody does. Yeah. And so with social media, it's like an even heightened thing once you are a social media star, but even just a consumer on social media. Mm -hmm. Like I know that mental health is skyrocketing because Again, of I would think the internet. Yeah. So we've talked about we talked about this in our one of our last couple episodes on the podcast, social, social dilemma. dilemma. Yeah. If you haven't watched it, it's on Netflix. Go watch it. It's like, I want to watch it again. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It's really scary. Um, but I, I don't know. It's You guys should totally watch it. But yeah, no, mental health, I think, is at an all-time high because, because of, of social, media. social media. You see these pretty people on there. You see these perfect lives because nobody wants to post about their mm -hmm. not perfect life. Like Everybody edits their photos. I edit my teeth whiter and all my pictures. Sometimes yeah. I make my arms look a little bit bigger and I kind of, <laughs> I do kind of want to talk about that and talk about kind of not, I don't know if it's like body dysmorphia, but I think everybody has like a negative vision on their body. Um, and we kind of want to talk about that in a future episode, but mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of get into that, um, on my story here in a little bit. Um, I have written down the downside of being on the internet is people can watch you judge you comment, anonymously most of the time and, and well, they not all the time they don't have to say it to your face like yeah. it's just an easy you just comment type it. so i mean it kind of it does like having all these people come at me at like uh 17 years old and i was just a kid that grew up on a dairy like i i didn't have anything like i was wasn't popular in school but i, I wasn't not popular as mm -hmm. i don't know how to explain it but um it's it was tough for me and just being thrown into it but i was and you were in the public eye after I had just had this other boyfriend and people are like comparing you to him. And I didn't and even know our, this guy, John. Yeah, John and our, my past relationships, people are like, well, no, I want you with this person because they didn't know you. Yeah. But I knew you and I was like, screw y'all. I'm not listening to you. I remember on Curious Cat. Do you remember Curious Cat? Gosh, yes. People are so That mean. was awful. It was kind of just like an anonymous thing like where anybody can type anything. and Just um, so people can be hateful, basically. And I got on there and I was like bombarded with all these like mean comments and it was just, it was awful. Like, anyways, I didn't really start like having anxiety. Okay, well, so I should probably get into my depression episode. So I took uh, medicine for depression thanks to Madeline. Because I was just, I don't even think I can even say it on YouTube of like what I told to you, like what I wanted to do. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, but Ma anyways, long story short, Madeline talked to my parents about me. She's like. So Steven said something that was very concerning. Yeah. And I, and he had been like expressing that he'd been sad for years, but didn't know why. And um, I, well, okay. It was because I was like, I'm always like the scrawny kid. I was always tall and skinny and like people make fun of me at school and now I have to worry about it online and stuff. And like there was, I felt like there was nothing I could do to fix me. I always yeah. thought I had something wrong with me. You know? Yeah. And so he said something to me and I was like, I have got to tell his parents. And we weren't even dating for that long. Like two or three months, maybe. Yeah. I don't really know how long. But one day Stephen was at school and I went over to his parents' house and basically talked to, I think it was just your mom. I don't think your dad was in there. Mm -mm. I think he was outside. Um, but I was talking with Aaron about what Steven had said. And I was just like, I don't know what you want to do with that, but I just wanted to let you know, this is what's happening. And this is what he's thinking. And, and at this moment, I still didn't believe in mental health at all. Like, cause mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just, and I felt bad about going behind your back, but at the same time, I knew you weren't going to say anything. Cause for like two weeks, I was like, tell your parents, tell your parents, and I was like, tell I your will, parents, tell your or parents. I won't or something. And I I'm glad you did because I wouldn't be on the medicine. I wouldn't. Like, yeah. I don't know where I would be. And so I just basically told him, I was like, he expressed to me that it's been like this for like two years now, like before I was even in the picture. And I was like, dude, you might need to go yeah. get help. <laughs> kind of like John. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I kind of forced him, not forced him, but I knew he needed. The I needed that push. push. Yeah. Really, really, really bad. So again, if you hear or see something, say something. Yeah. Because it could save somebody's life. Yeah. For real. Um. So... I get on this depression medicine. I stay on it for a year. Look at me. Uh, 
Sorry, I'm being quiet because Mia's right behind me. If you guys are listening on Spotify or Anchor, go to to our our YouTube YouTube video and go to whatever time this is and see Mia. (laughs) Oh my god! Okay, sorry guys, so they're distracting. Like I said, we need to lock them out. I know, but they're such good cats. Yeah. Is Michael even in here still? He was. Yeah, he's sleeping over there by the window. I have to see him. Hold on, guys. Oh, he's so cute. Okay. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? You were talking about how we gave you a push could save someone's life. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm on this medicine for a year, and I think you know what? I did the same thing as about one. You know, what? I don't need it anymore. So I get off of it. And I'm off of it for maybe a year, another year. And this is it, at this point, we're in college now. Um, we have an apartment together. And the first, like the very first thing that I guess kind of I had like a panic attack was we were coming home from Cotton Patch on New Year's Eve Eve. It was like two days before <laughs> New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. And I was so sick like the most sick I've ever been in my entire life. I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. You I lost felt, a lot of weight. Yeah, I have that written down. So oh. I lost 27 pounds. I weighed 142 pounds my first year of college. And I got down to 115. And I'm tall. Like I, I'm, I'm not a giant. I'm six foot. And being six foot at 115 pounds is scary. If it you guys is, go back to old videos, you can see how far Steven has come. Like, I have definitely filled back out. I've gained more than 40 pounds ever since then. So, or no, more than almost 40 pounds mm-hmm. since then. But, it, I mean, it's hard. It's hard for me to gain weight. And, of course, we'll, I, like I said earlier, we're going to talk about kind of our bodies and how we, or I don't know, in a future episode. And, uh, yeah, it was just really hard for me. I lost a lot of weight. And so I decided, or first... I was going to doctors because I had to go. I thought something was wrong with my stomach because TMI, if you guys don't want to listen to any of this part, it's about to be not graphic, but it's going to be a little gross. I Okay. Just don't go like mega into (laughs) detail. I would shit like literally seven or eight times a day. (laughs) It was awful. And I had to, uh, it, it it was awful. I couldn't eat. I was always throwing up. I was always taking a dump. It was horrible. And uh, so I decided to go to a doctor because my parents were like, dude, you like you've lost way too much weight. Yeah, it's not healthy. And so I go to the doctor and I kind of explain my symptoms and she's like, oh, you have anxiety. I was like, what? No, I don't. <laughs> like, well, I don't know. Anyways, um, I ignore her. I ignore that doctor and I go to a GI doctor, a gastro and a something. I don't know. And uh, I had to like give a stool sample, which was really gross. I had, like poop in a cup. And like <laughs> ship it off in the mail. It's like, I don't know. It's weird. I could, I don't know. I wonder how much feces goes through the mail Ew. every day. Uh, anyways, I, <laughs> I, I go to this GI doctor. We go to several different doctors and they're like, dude, everything's fine. Like your body's normal. And so I, uh, I give sertraline a shot again. And I think back, I'm like, dude, it's anxiety. Like, yeah, it's anxiety. it hasn't obviously like cured you. No, like but... I still have attacks. So, yeah. Well, I don't have like panic attacks anymore, but I had one panic attack one time and it was the scariest thing I've ever gone through in my entire life. I was driving to our apartment by myself. We were at dinner with all of our family and yeah, I was after just... For some reason, I was in a different car. I think we were just going back to school and yeah. I had come early or something in my car. And I had my own car. And yeah. So I, I'm I'm heading back. Or, well, you already didn't feel good at the dinner and you're like, I I'm left going dinner home. early yeah. because you guys went and got dessert. So I start driving back to our... To our oh, by the way, we were with his parents and my parents. Yeah. So I, I'm driving and I get about like... Uh, 15 or 20 minutes into the drive and my heart starts racing. I had my Apple watch on and I got up to like 190 beats per minute. And which if you guys don't know, like the average heart rate is like 70 70. or 80. (laughs) I was like 190. Like I, I couldn't move. Like my hands were shaking all over the place. Like I was freaking out. It was so hot outside and I pull over on the side of the road and it got to the point like where I was like in a state of paralysis and I couldn't move like all my fingers like went in i couldn't dial the phone i remember i had to i somehow i got my phone out of my pocket and i called my parents i was like get me an ambulance like i think i'm dying like i really thought i was dying like Mm -hmm. in the car it was horrifying and that's what a lot of people say when they have panic attacks is they 
feel like they're literally dying. Like I wanted to rip all my hair out mm-hmm. at the same time. I just remember like sitting up and like I wanted to rip everything off of my head. Like I, I it was yeah, scary. Yeah, like people say that they want to like jump out of windows and stuff. Just to because, make it stop. Yeah, because it's like that awful. I've had a panic attack, but it wasn't because of anxiety. anxiety. It was because I had to give blood. <laughs> I, was, I thought about bringing that up earlier, but I... It was like, I don't know yeah. if you want to tell that. It wasn't like about mental health, really. I mean, I was anxious about giving blood and they had yeah. already done it all. I passed out. And then luckily I was in a doctor's office when I had my first ever panic attack. And yeah, my my hands just did this. And I told my, well, I was laying down because I just passed out. And I asked my mom, I was like, did they put something on my chest? And she was like, no, what do you mean? And I was like, there feels like I can't, like something's on my chest. And then that moment she saw my feet start curling up. And, you're, and then my hands You're started. in a state of paralysis. You can't move no matter how hard you try. Yeah. So I actually looked it up. And what the reason why that happens is because it's all the blood from your fingers, your toes, everything mm-hmm. rushes to your heart because your body's like, oh, we got to go into protect pro- mode, protect your heart. Yeah. Um, so your body just all tenses up because yeah. all of that is rushing. So you can't move or anything. Yeah. Like, I couldn't ever imagine like doing this with my fingers. Yeah. And my all. mom, I just remember her being like, like, I remember seeing her face like freak out going to get the nurses and stuff. But again, luckily I was in a doctor's office and they're like, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just a panic attack. You're fine. Breathe, breathe. Like you're not going to die. Cause I kept asking, am I going to die? <laughs> yeah. I, I remember. So after I pulled over and everything, I called my parents and first they didn't answer like for the first four yeah, times. Yeah. You tried I called calling me. me. I called Madeline first. And then I called my parents and then I kept on calling and calling and calling. And then somebody eventually answered. I can't remember if it was you or my dad. Uh, But I just remember saying, I need somebody here. Like, call me an ambulance. Like, I am going to die. And I didn't die. I, (laughs) I just remember sitting there like with my car on AC full blast. And I just remember thinking like cars driving past me and like, they have no idea what I'm doing right mm-hmm. now. Like nobody knows that I'm, I, oh, I took my shirt off too because I was overheating too. I felt like I couldn't breathe anything. Um, so I eventually my parents come and pick me up and they take me. And I remember I got in the car with my mom and she drove me home or to the yeah i think your dad drove your car Mm -hmm. or vice versa no i think your mom drove your car i know i drove in the car with my mom my dad took the car because i was in my mom's car and as soon as we got into the parking garage well i fell asleep in the car because i was emotionally drained like i was crying i was physically too yeah i weighed 115 pounds and i had no food in my body i couldn't eat that was another problem like i could not eat without my medicine and um once we get there, I open the door and I throw up so much in the parking garage, so much. And I just remember like walking inside and I couldn't do anything. And it was, I was in this state for how long do you think? Like a month? Of just throwing up? Throwing up everything. Yeah. A month or maybe two, two or it was one a or two while. months. Anyways, I know I'm taking forever on this, but. No, I mean, I think this episode, if it's a long episode, yeah. I think it needs to be just kind of talk about everything um Mm -hmm. i mean we have a lot to talk about yeah it was it was a really hard time in my life and um i kind of want to i have some other things too yeah i had to stay in bed and i had to go on walks to ease my mind and uh because i remember like i always had to stay hydrated i felt like i wasn't hydrated enough um it was just really hard for me and uh I'm just I don't think I really have anything else to say on that except like um, I still kind of get like anxiety attacks sometimes but not like the ones like where I'm in a state of paralysis but um, like if we're going to the airport sometimes like usually every single time uh, we go to the airport and it's I, not because you're scared of planes I'm not scared of planes or anything I I don't know what it is I I really don't know and I'm like, I still struggle with that because I don't know what causes it. And like, I take my medicine, like the days Overall, that I need to Overall, though, your medicine has definitely Oh, helped. 100%. And it's not like medicine, again, doesn't cure, cure you. Completely. Mm-hmm. Like, I you still, still have to have, like, there's a difference between nervousness and anxiety. That's, like, yeah. I get my, the normal dose of nervousness. Like, yeah, if I have to do a speech, I feel yucky in my tummy. And I don't. <laughs> I, my heart races. I like I'm sweaty. Like I can't breathe. I'm like hyperventilating or whatever. And um, I, I have it written down right here. 
um, yeah, whenever I'm in a car for a long time, I feel like I can't escape. That's that's what really gets me is like I want to be able to move and like stretch my legs, walk around if I need to. Like if I need some alone time, I can have my own alone time. And uh, but even like I, it just depends because sometimes whenever we go on road trips, I'm fine, and sometimes I'm not. Mm-hmm. And so I guess I don't know. I that's something that I'm just gonna have to deal with just for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. So unless there's like a cure one day, which yeah. I don't think there <laughs> ever will be. Um, anyways. That's pretty much it for all I have to say. I, yeah. I mean, I still struggle with it. And I think if if you ha- relate to any of these, go talk to your parents, go talk to a guardian, go talk to a doctor. Because, I mean, talking about it does really help. Oh, I just thought about like whenever I went to the doctor, I th- think you better do it too. I think everyone does. They made you like do a questionnaire. Yeah. And you had to like check all this stuff. Dude, I answered it honestly. Like answer it honestly when you're in there. It's like just a survey about... I think it's the DDAS, like it's 21 questions yeah. about, yeah, yeah whatever. And anyway. You don't have to, like, you have to be truthful because doctors aren't going to judge you. Doctors are like the last person to judge you. They're there to help. Mm-hmm. They, that's what they dedicated their life to. Yeah, but they did like a questionnaire and I just remember like circling and being like, yep, 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 like that's me. Mm-hmm. And it was all the like not great spectrum yeah. of it like i'm not doing too hot yeah maybe that's why she was like here's the 50 <laughs> yeah oh yeah um we got up the like uh, we upped our dosage to 100 milligrams and so of our sertraline uh w- i think like we said earlier people start on like 25 or 50 i think i started on 50 and then um, i kind of remember you being on 25 no i think that was another one of our friends i was on was i on 25 i'm pretty sure you were I think maybe, maybe they started me out and then oh, okay yeah that's what it was they started me out and then a month after I was like I don't know I kind of like don't really feel different so then they bumped me up to mm-hmm. 50 and then I ended up bumping it up to 100 not uh, that long ago though right it was about a year and a half ago yeah. or maybe two years ago but it it really did help us mm-hmm. a lot and changed our lives really like mm-hmm. I don't know but if you guys are struggling with anything relating to mental health, please tell someone. I promise you there is someone out there who does care and who will listen. Um, you are not alone in this battle. Find people on the internet that you can vent to and talk to about They're, if you feel like you have no one that you can. Mm-hmm. Um, I just know talking about it feels so good. Mm-hmm. And finally having somebody else not be in your mind, but know that you're not having to keep that all to yourself. Yeah. And um, I think it does help that more and more people are talking about mental health. I'm so happy that they are. I remember like me making that video four years ago was like taboo. Like no one talked about it. Um, It kind of sucks. It it, it does suck. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, I used to not believe it. Yeah, and I and, think it's more of like the older generation. They just thought they didn't. Yeah, they didn't believe in it. They didn't think it was a real thing. And we're obviously not saying that all the older generation no. don't believe. Yeah, but I know I didn't. But I think as a whole, the mm-hmm. older generation did not. And I, I wouldn't even our majority. I'm not going to blame my parents at all for me not believing in it. It just, it just never came up. Like yeah, I, you didn't want to talk about it. I didn't. Mm-hmm. It's like they would always ask me if I was okay and happy. I'm like, yeah, I'm happy. Like I have a good life. Mm-hmm. But it it wasn't their fault at all that I I didn't know. I just never talked about yeah, it. Yeah. So I would look up the symptoms and learn more about it. Um, and maybe see if you fall under the category. And if you do, please seek help. Um, again, it does not have to be through medication. There are plenty of things on the internet that um explain like other things you can do apparently exercise is very good um stress reliever and everything under Mm -hmm. the sun and yeah what really helped me with anxiety with my anxiety was just getting up out of our apartment because our apartment only had like one window per room Mm -hmm. and i always felt like i was trapped in there i like having a lot of windows around me where i feel like there's natural light but also going outside and getting that fresh air helped me so much like Mm -hmm. i I could not imagine. And that was one thing that I really did not like about our apartment is mm-hmm. the lack of light in there. I felt like it was always dark 
and our it was our like a wood or our flooring was dark wood and, and our windows were facing the interior of the building it wasn't outside mm-hmm. outside it was like there was a building right here and a building right here and we were facing the middle area the hammock area yeah it was and like it, the open area. and it got dark in our apartment at like five or six at night mm-hmm. and um i actually just realized what the scale of, it's the depression anxiety Stress scale. D A S S twenty one. It's twenty one questions. Awesome. <laughs> I just thought of it. Um, but yeah, that is basically what we have to say. Um, please seek help if you need it. We mm. are gonna list down below the suicide hotline um if you are needing that. Yeah. And um I, I think that's it, right? Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for listening or watching. Uh thank you for all the support on all on this podcast you guys are really amazing and i couldn't imagine my life without you you guys you Mm -hmm. both um now we're just forever grateful and excited to be doing what we're doing and we want to use our platform as much as we can Mm -hmm. to help the society (laughs) yeah oh and i guess this is a good time to talk about it too uh verbally on a podcast we are officially this video is already gone up on a saturday but we're Mm -hmm. posting our podcasts on saturdays now around 1 p.m central time and our youtube videos on sunday yeah if you don't know if you are randomly watching us we have an actual like youtube channel called madeline and steven yeah that we post on there every sunday yeah anyways follow us on all of our social medias i I don't know just do whatever you guys want if you guys want to you guys can check out the description there's gonna be some stuff down there yeah (laughs) again thank you guys so much for watching i don't have anything watching or listening yeah yeah (laughs) do you have anything no okay all right you can you can take us out dude i don't know how to it is really hard we got anyway okay i'll just say thank you guys for listening and we hope you're having a great day or night please remember to be kind and we hope to see you guys in our next episode (laughs) bye guys bye